Hi everyone, welcome. As you can see, here's where I keep my little collection of cardboard tubes that I eventually shred and make my bedding out of, but we're not here to look at my supply of bedding materials. I'm here to show you kind of the follow-up to what was discussed when we last checked in on my two newest worm bins with European Nightcrawlers. At that time I was showing you some paper towels that I had placed pepper seeds on and put those bags in um, plastic after dampening them in the hopes that I would get germinated sprouts. And they all crashed and burned. So all my crashed and burned attempt at getting seeds started, all those paper towels were used as bedding in my two newest European Nightcrawler worm bins. So I hinted at possibly getting my garden restarted and this is the result. So soon after I made the last video, I did exactly what I hinted at, which was to take all the soil that I prepared and plop some more pepper seeds in, and then over here even tomato seeds. So I'm happy to report that it's kind of a happy ending, perhaps a little bit behind as far as timing goes, but over here you can even see my little diagram showing how the seeds are arranged, and oh my goodness, my furnace just kicked on. All right, let's get into the wormery and get on with feeding the two newest systems I have, the European night crawlers. Let's regroup in the wormery. So now some of the stuff they're, they're gonna be fed can be seen here. Cabbage, grapes, banana peels, coffee, nice assortment of stuff, and it seems like a lot, but it's not quite as heavy as I thought it would be when I picked it up. I figured a container overflowing like this would be very heavy, but it's not. And I've also got a whole bunch of, well, it's really just four, but these are those really big, luxurious napkins I get from my mom's. <laughs> so even though it's only four napkins, it does seem like a good bit of bedding. We'll throw two into each system as part of the bedding we include with today's feeding. And in case we think that that's not enough, I've got my prepared bedding off on the side. On the ready should we choose to use it. And, heck, we can even use this as supplemental bedding in the feeding zone. The coffee filters that I use as feeding zone indicators, as you saw, part of the feeding they're getting today is a couple more days worth of coffee, which includes new filters. So the old ones can be promoted <laughs> to a higher purpose bedding to accompany the feeding. So, after 12 days now, since the last check-in, the systems are 19 days of age now. That first check-in came on day seven, after the systems had been in service for one week. And we're gonna be bumping into some old, old, old chunks of corn cob, and I've already found one of them here. These are objects that I've been deliberately not helping along in the breakdown process. So a lot of times I'll find stuff and crush it or kind of break it and try to fragment things further to speed their breakdown. But in the case of the corn cobs, I've been deliberately trying to not mess with them because they were given to the worms in their previous home, the yellow buckets, 275 days ago now. And they're making great progress, but they're still not quite worked down, got a little bit more ways to go. One little wormy fell off my hand in the very beginning and landed right here, and I didn't feel like it was anything to worry about. This, I believe, is just a chunk of food. And then this was a chunk of food, too, that fell off. Oh, well, whatever, it belongs over here, so we'll return it. And as far as chunks of food, I'm starting to see some of what they received during the last check-in. And I can see that this is a pepper. And we might even bump into some of those napkins that were, or paper towels that were placed in here with the old rotted seeds that failed to germinate. Well, no, it's not true. Some of them did actually have sprouts growing out of them. It seems like the most successful one that I had was one that I didn't close the plastic bag on correctly. <laughs> so I'm looking at this piece of paper towel with all these nice little pepper sprouts on it, and it's dry. When I opened up the plastic bag, the contents of it were dry. I had failed to close the plastic bag 
properly and whatever moisture that had been in there that succeeded in causing the seeds to sprout escaped and dried out and left me with the need to start from scratch and man I'm so glad to see that those seeds are all sprouting as nicely as they are a little bit behind the eight ball at this point in terms of timing we're now probably eh, a little bit over a month a little bit more than a month away from the final frost date for my grow zone so uh, I doubt that well I don't know we'll see you know we'll see how they come along between now and then and if they're able to go into the ground at that point then I would say the sooner the better the sooner the better they're out in the open and the fresh air and the natural sunlight the um, the better for sure so over into bin number two let's see how things are progressing in here I didn't really see any of those paper towels that we threw in there with the the failed seeds on them so that's a good sign and I did encounter at least one other piece of corn cob along the way over there and here's another one I think last time oh geez see that I gotta stop being so rough I just chipped off a piece of this one one of the corn cobs I attempted to I think it was here I think I tried to like swat it or I no you know what I did I I threw it I threw it against another one of the corn cobs so I had it in my hand I threw it against another one and it shattered kind of going against the whole idea of me not interfering with the breakdown process on those so in one of the bins we're down a corn cob bit because of my rough handling unfortunately and after 275 days it's not too surprising that these corn cobs are as fragile as they are covered in worms all over enjoying it in and out of the thing down within the hollow so I think as long as the worms keep at it the way they clearly are enjoying it over there we might actually eventually get to the point where we no longer bump into any of those bits of corn cob anymore all right I think the foods that they got last time were an assortment of different things that I imagined would go pretty quickly I think there were scraps of lettuce and little bits of tomato and all kinds of this and that and I guess after 12 days it's not too surprising that they've done a pretty good job on breaking down the majority of what they got last time so it feels like a fairly opportune check-in well timed to come back in here with more food for them so let's get on with giving them their nice assortment of banana peel and grapes and cabbage all right, so why don't we start with dropping in some paper towels as part of the foundation for the feeding. Certainly throwing off the camera's light sensor, suddenly thinking that there's a whole lot more available light here in the scene than there was a moment ago. So probably making the rest of the systems very difficult to see so the sooner the better on getting some darker materials in here to cover up the the bright napkins all right did that help hopefully it did but in case it didn't here's some more dark material a little bit of coffee to go in and we'll set the feeding zone indicators aside but let's not forget to get these older bits of leftover foods back into action by dropping them in here into the feeding zone same story here here we only pulled out some corn cob bits maybe we encountered a little bit of banana peel or whatever this thing is here banana peels I believe came in with the stragglers that got reunited from the bait box when we bought over the last of the stragglers so slowly but surely we'll get to the point where we'll make really no mention of their origin but as I mentioned earlier these were the worms that came out of the yellow buckets and then the yellow buckets were emptied into one large tray so that the migration could be facilitated in that tray and 
once we had an adequate number of worms gathered in the horizontal migration feeding zone, we did the initial haul out to launch these systems. And as usual, the material doesn't get depopulated 100%, so I did what I usually do is deploy a bait box to try to round up whoever didn't get the memo and didn't come over for the gathering in the horizontal migration feeding zone and at this point I think we're we're in pretty good shape as far as having all the worms that used to live in the yellow buckets over here so I just sprinkled in a little bit of my grit over here on top of the feeding in case they need it and we can now cover up the feeding zone and at the same time we're going to be fluffing things up here aerating to increase in the amount of space the material needs to fit worms everywhere I do remember a comment I made during the last check-in about how much moisture I felt down low in here and as I scoop up material from down low I'm not feeling quite as much I guess because it's not worthy of mentioning in terms of ooh, how moist it is although when I excavated the feeding zone it did seem to me like there was a fairly high degree of moisture there which is nice so let's see if bin number two is similar here maybe a little bit more moisture than I noticed in bin number one I mean you saw the stuff that they just got all those grapes I assume are gonna release a good bit of moisture as they start breaking down the cabbage maybe not so much the banana peel perhaps not so much but I certainly don't feel the need to compensate for moisture. I think we're just fine in here as far as the moisture levels go. And as you saw, we usually cover up pretty thoroughly with the plastic at the end, just to make sure, you know, the moisture stays in, doesn't get lost to evaporation. So we'll certainly do that once again here when we're done. And for the most part, we are done. So let's get the plastic covers back on here. And then we can let our little European night crawlers in these systems continue. And then we'll be finished. So, as we get the covers back on, let me just proceed with thanking you guys for being here. I really appreciate you keeping me company on this check-in. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. All I got left to do is get a few things cleaned up, put away. But I'm not going to waste your time with that. Time to go. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.